In this video, I'm going to explain why swapping your front intake fan with a high static pressure fan for your Alienware computer may be one of the easiest and best bang for your buck upgrades. Now do note that this applies to any Alienware that's built recently, so anywhere from the R5, R7, all the way to the R12, because they all share very similar types of cases, with the exception of the R10 Plus cases that have more room for a second intake fan near the top. Now obviously I would like to change the, rear, the top fan for the radiator that's for the liquid cooling. However, that's way too much work. I want to see how much can how much performance can I extract out of just doing one simple upgrade, which is just replacing the front fan. Another question I'm really curious to answer is, is it actually better to get a high static pressure fan than just a regular airflow fan? Now, one of the issues with this little case is that there's not much ventilation. There's only the bottom piece over here in the front that allows for some air to be sucked in and then obviously exhaust out over here. In general, this R7 Aurora case is not very good with airflow. And I heard a lot on Reddit and all the research I've been doing is that even though that high static pressure fans are meant for radiators and you know something that is kind of very close to a heat sink or something like that, it is actually more optimal to use this in a situation where there's a little more obstruction, such as these grills here. There's these grills that really just don't let the airflow come in very smoothly. One of the most obvious obstructions for any type of Alienware case, such as the R7 or the R12, the latest one, is that the GPU is obstructing the airflow. So in theory, it's probably better to have a high static pressure fan or balance fan instead of your regular airflow fan. So hopefully this will actually give a decent performance boost in kind of temperatures, the thermals. And I'm hoping that my GPU, the RTX 3070, performs a lot better, especially when I'm playing virtual reality, which is very demanding. I've noticed that I dropped a lot of frames when I'm playing Half-Life Alex. I'm not sure if the root issue is the simple fact that playing virtual reality, especially on the Quest 2 using virtual desktop, is just very strenuous, even on an RTX 3070, unfortunately. So maybe this fan case isn't gonna help with the throttling when it gets too hot inside. Another thing we're gonna answer is how is the sound difference using a better afterbrand Noctua fan rather than the Dell OEM fan. Now the Dell OEM fan can go really fast. You can go up to almost, I think, 5,000 RPMs, which is ridiculous. And it literally sounds like a jet when I put this in 100%. Just hear it for yourself. Now this Noctua fan, which is the NFF12, which is a 120 millimeter high static pressure type of fan can only go to around 1500 RPM. So that is pretty, that isn't, that isn't very powerful. However, even at this stock fan at 1500, sounds really loud and I did some, definitely something that I don't wanna play. I noticed that this fan always sits around 20%. It never goes more than 600, 700 RPMs. So it's not really, it's not really being utilized much. And I'm not sure if that's because of what Alienware and Dell has pre-programmed it to be, because you can actually go into the Alienware Command Control Center and adjust the speeds of these fans. And it's never set, it never goes above 20% of its, of its full RPM. So really concerning, I'm not sure why that's the case, but we'll see if switching to this fan is gonna improve thermals and obviously the sounds. We'll talk later in the video about the fan curves and why it was always stuck at 20%. So before we go into the installation of this fan and some of the gotchas while I was installing it, I wanna talk more about this specific model. Now this is a Noctua fan, the NFF12 PMW fan. Now this is a four pin fan, that means it can be controlled by the motherboard. So your thermals are gonna be linked to say a sensor, maybe your GPU sensor, and it'll adjust the fan based on that. So you definitely wanna get the four pin version. Now this specific package comes with a lot of accessories, some of which you probably won't need for this type of upgrade. It comes, for example, with a line adapter to help reduce the noise levels if you are connecting this with a three pin connector, which doesn't have any controls from the motherboard. It also comes with a Y splitter in case you wanna use the same fan header on your motherboard to power two types of fans. It comes with an extension cable, which is very handy if, if you wanna mount this in a very awkward situation. But like I said, you don't need any of this. And it comes with your typical screws and rubber tips so that you can mount this on. With the Dell case, you don't need this at all. So why exactly did I get the specific version? Well, I'm gonna be using these accessories to upgrade my other computer when I eventually get it, Dell G5. Stay subscribed if you want to see that video on how I'm going to upgrade all the case fans for that. But yeah, you don't need to buy the specific model. You can get a cheaper model which doesn't have all these accessories. I'll put a link in the description down below. So with that in mind, let's get right into the installation. I just want to quickly mention two precautionary measures. First is when you unplug this and you want to start working on the computer unplugged, you make sure you press the power button just for a bit and it's going to let all the energy out. I noticed that when I unplugged the computer and I pressed the power button, I could still hear the computer try to turn on. So there was some energy in the power supply, which is a little bit scary. The second thing is to always ground yourself, make sure you don't shock your any of your delicate components. I'm actually using a wrist strap connected to the metal piece of this computer 
to hopefully mitigate any possible shocks to my delicate components, especially my RTX 3070, which is very coveted. I'll leave in the link in description for this particular type of wrist strap. So swapping the front intake fan is extremely easy. However, just one big gotcha. Make sure you remove your graphics card first before doing this. I made the mistake of keeping it in while trying to remove it because I thought maybe I could save myself an extra step, but it ended up being a really bad idea. The way you want to remove the front intake fan is obviously remove your GPU first to give a lot of clearance. After that, you'll need to disconnect the fan's power cable from the motherboard's fan header. And then you're gonna press this little black tip at the top of the front intake case. You're gonna press it down and pop it out, and then you're gonna pull it away from the front intake fan towards where the GPU would be. You don't actually pull it up, you actually pull it away. If you try to pull it upwards towards the power supply unit, it's gonna get stuck and it's gonna be very hard to remove. Once you remove the front fan, you'll notice that it's being held in some kind of enclosure, some kind of bracket. Before you remove the front fan from the enclosure, make note of the stock fan's positioning of the power cable so that you copy the exact same position. You just simply need to pop it out. Now, this is a little bit tricky. It, it takes a little bit of finesse, but once you get pop it out, put your other Noctua fan inside and also obviously direct the airflow so that it sucks air into the case. As mentioned previously, don't make the same mistake I did trying to put the case fan with the graphics card in the way from the top. This whole install was pretty frustrating, so learn from my mistakes. As you can see, it's much easier to put in the case fan without the graphics card in the way. The bracket will lock in, it'll kind of just snap right in, and then you're pretty much done. And of course, don't forget to plug in the four pin power cable into the motherboard's fan header. Okay, so that was a really strenuous upgrade, but we finally removed the Dell, the stock OEM fan that comes with it. So this Dell stock fan is rated at 148 CFM. So in order to make better sense of these specs, let's standardize the units. Let's convert 148 CFM to cubic meters per hour. As you can see, the Dell fan has a much higher cubic meter per hour at 251 versus 93 on the Noctua. This means that this fan can move a lot of air, obviously because it can go up to a much higher RPM. Will this affect performance in thermals? Well, let's find out a little bit later. Moreover, if we compare the stock OEM fan with the Noctua fan, you may notice that the Noctua fan has slightly less gaps between the fan blades. This design difference allows the Noctua fan to yield a higher static pressure. For those experts out there watching, how would you compare the stock OEM fan against just any other normal airflow fan? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm really curious to know how they stack up. So let's go into the conclusion. Let's wrap this up and let's show my results of the thermals and noise levels with the new fan. After many hours of rigorous testing, I found that there was a net benefit by simply swapping the front intake fan for a high static pressure fan. I noticed a substantial drop in GPU temperature from 73 Celsius all the way down to 65 Celsius, which is quite impressive for such a minor upgrade. I've also noticed that the new Noctua fan is a lot quieter than the stock OEM fan went maxed out at 1500 RPMs. Now there's one downside to using a high static pressure fan is that it's always going to be a little bit louder than your typical airflow case fans. Even though the Noctua fan cannot go faster than the speeds of the stock fan, which go well into the 3000 RPM range, the Noctua fan is a lot more efficient at moving cool air into the case with less noise and power. Now one word of warning, if you're using an Alienware control center, I recommend to adjust your custom fan curves so that you utilize the front fan more. You see, Dell assumes that the fan runs at 3000 plus RPMs, so it uses a percentages to adjust the fan RPMs. Unfortunately, since the base fan speed of the Noctua fan is much slower than the stock fan, you need to adjust the fan's curves to an overall higher percentage. You can copy mine if you're interested, here's a screenshot of it. This was a little bit annoying because it made my testing a little bit more difficult and I had to control the variables, but overall there was still a net improvement, so I do recommend upgrading your front intake fan, it's going to give you a really good bang for buck. And now, speaking to the elephant in the room, let's talk about my really dusty liquid-cooled radiator. Unfortunately, I don't have the confidence to completely remove my entire CPU cooler and replace it with a much better fan than the stock one, because the stock one is obviously going to be loud. Please let me know in the comment section if you have an Aurora R7 and you were able to clean your radiator with all the dust, or were able to replace the fans without having to do a lot of work, please let me know in the comment section down below. It would be much appreciated. So that's it for this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Please do give a like, it really helps with the channel and I will see you in the next video.